Hello once again all, Kata Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter, here to give you another update of the fascinating, fascinating softwood lumber market across North America, what's happening with the prices, what's going on with the sawmills and the wholesalers, and what the customers are saying. Here at Madison's, we do this uh, data update every week since 1952. The company was started uh, by Peter Madison, and I'm the third owner. So the insight that we have, uh, the very, very important sources that we uh, contact every week to do the market survey are uh, deep and long history. As well, uh, the lumber prices that we publish on Friday, I have uh, historically going back to 1952 um, on hard copy, uh, to 1980 uh, available in Excel. Uh, we do sell that data, uh, whether to subscriber or not subscriber. Uh, anyone can purchase uh, whatever they would like out of the 500 individual software lumber and panel prices that we track uh, for whatever time range that they are interested to see. And so uh, right now, let's go look at the graphs and I will explain um, these latest uh, lumber prices for February and maybe try to give a little bit of uh, understanding of what's gonna be coming up in the next month or two. Okay, and let's start with this table. These uh, images are generated from the dashboard. So what you're looking at is what my subscribers can see when they log in. We've got a few different screens of ways where their prices are represented uh, and they can be compared against each other. And so what we had was a rather flat market uh, for most of February and then uh, popping up uh, last week and a little bit more this week. Uh, those top three items, Western Spruce, Southern Pine, and Eastern Spruce 2x4, uh, you, can you can see where those prices are right now in correlation with each other. Uh, then you've got your studs. That price, uh, you know, it's a different product, so the price doesn't change exactly uh, along the lines of your dimension 2x4. Uh, can't build a house without studs, so it's really necessary. And then the bottom line was the softwood plywood price. Here we have those prices again uh, in a graph. And uh, you can see how, of course, for 2019, it was very flat compared to the past couple of years when we had all this volatility um, due to uh, changes to society from COVID, uh, but also due to uh, fundamental underlying housing demand as the U.S. was underbuilt for uh, 10 years. And the demographic coming on now, there's about 15 years of people achieving uh, first time home buyer age coming into the marketplace. So the expectation is that demand for lumber is going to stay strong for that time. And um, on the west side for your western spruce, we have a system wide fragmentation in logistics where the availability of trucks and rail cars is just really. Um, broken up and the sawmills just are beside themselves where they don't know what to do. In On the east side for Eastern Spruce it's the same thing and it's causing really incons inconsistent pricing. So this is that benchmark Western Spruce 2x4 price I talk about all the time for this week February 25th that price is $1,350 uh, US per thousand board feet which is up $20 or 2% from last week and is up $173 or 15% from last month when it was $1,178. It's up $310 or 30% from the same week last year when it was $1,040. And it's up $904 or 203% from two years ago when it was $446. So like I said before, we're not going to see $400 2x4s anymore. Okay, and so now regarding this situation that we're in right now with the problem uh, on the supply chain, as I often say that lumber is a forward indicator uh, where we had those sharp increases in the lumber prices during the middle of 2020 and again uh, in November of 2021. People trying to complain about that, uh, saying, um, you know, this is a scandal, it's collusion, whatever they were, I don't know what they were trying to say. How are 
7,000 individual sawmills going to collude with each other every week about a price. It's more than a thousand different companies, uh, some of them with you know multiple operations. Um, the point here is that lumber is a leading indicator and the uh, one of the reasons why the prices were going up as we were saying over the past couple of years was increase in cost of transportation. And so now data has just come out. Uh, what was the increase in transportation costs both for trucking and freight in the past year? 25%. So straight up, 25% increase in transportation costs for the consumer of lumber. Um, and this, of course, uh, is reflected in the price. Not that the data that we print includes transportation costs, but that is a factor for the customer when they are talking to their suppliers and when they are thinking about booking their orders. And the other thing that came out of our data gathering this week uh, that we found out from the industry folks was that the sawmills were saying that uh, customers were calling but not necessarily booking orders. They were looking to see what potentially the availability uh, of material is uh, and prices during March uh, as they look forward to the coming uh, spring building season. Uh, and then for their part, because people do often ask, the retailers, it would seem, have booked their orders and sat back for the past uh, week or two, uh, not needing to order anymore. And everybody, uh, the retailers, the large home builders, the small home builders, the contractors are all, you know, waiting for their wood that they had ordered uh, in expectation of what they're going to need coming up now uh, for spring. And this is putting a, a difficulty for both the seller and the buyer as it's kind of hard to set the price when you don't know when your wood is going to arrive. And that's been a problem uh, for a long time now, but it's just really very ongoing and it's showing up in other commodities besides lumber. Uh, the, um, as I said, lumber being a leading indicator, the uh, increases in the lumber price caused a shock to everyone while it was happening. Now you're seeing that throughout other commodities and consumer goods as we're having inflation and prices are going up um, for other things besides um, the wood building materials. Um, there have been some calls out of home builder agencies and associations uh, talking about replacement building materials. Uh, oh, maybe you'd like to use steel studs or go to using concrete instead of lumber. Those prices are going up too and buy more. It always happens. It's, that's what I mean about Madison's having the history and the wealth of the knowledge collected over these decades. When there are times that lumber prices go up and people start complaining, the other building materials, steel and concrete prices also go up later, buy more. Always buy more. So that's the situation right now. Uh, we're at the end of February. It's still winter across the continent. Uh, spring uh, construction activity has not started yet, but uh, industry people, the veterans, have been preparing for that. And so <clears throat> in the next month or two, it's going to be very interesting to see how that goes and what happens. Um, my videos coming up for uh, the latest data on U.S. housing starts compared to my lumber prices and the new home sales and new home prices compared to my lumber prices. So if you like what you see here, click subscribe on YouTube so that you'll be alerted uh, as soon as I make another update. Click like so other people can see it. And anyone interested in more uh, deeper information, uh, they're in my caption, uh, go to my website, fill out a form. We'll send you a sample of those 500 individual softwood lumber panel commodities and the latest prices, along with a Word file explaining the market commentary for what uh, the reason behind those price changes. And then if you decide you like that, you can subscribe to the actual dashboard and get this data when it comes out on Friday mornings instead of waiting weeks or maybe a month until I have time to post it on the website or to make a YouTube.